Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Today, I'm going to talk about content. Content is so important to language learning. Finding good content, interesting content, content at your level to learn from. Where do we find this content? I'm not sure. I want to toss some ideas out there with you. And I also want to show you a little bit of my library where over the years that I've been learning languages, I've been able to access content. A lot of it in the days before the internet and the availability of, of content on the internet, which has dramatically increased the quality and the quantity of, of content that's available to us. I sometimes think that if all of the people teaching languages in the world were to spend their time and effort creating content, that would be a much more useful thing for them to do rather than trying to teach the language, teach the grammar, teach the rules, drill. And I should say too that content such as exists, easy readers, readers, whatever, that's full of pre-reading questions, post-reading questions, all of that, forget it. Just create content. Right now with my Turkish, I'm up against the fact that once I get through my mini stories and who is she, from there to sort of genuine authentic content is such a big distance. I mean, I, I know that because even though my statistics statistics at link tell me that I have whatever, 2,500 words, if I pull in an article from a newspaper, it's practically all blue. So when people say, if you have a few thousand words, you got 70% of any content. I don't know where that comes from because my experience is if I bring in a newspaper article, say it's mostly blue, unknown words. Anyway, before we get further into the subject, I want to give you a brief tour of my library. First of all, I warn you that my library is messy, but some of the books that have influenced me, let's go over here to my Chinese section. You can't see that very well, but there are a number of readers there, and that's only a small part of the readers that I went through when learning Chinese. I spent so much time reading and listening. I mentioned these before, you can't really see them, but intermediate reader, the, uh, you know, uh, 20 stories on Chinese culture, etc. were some of the uh, sort of influential content items for me. I've got so many CDs of Chinese Xiangshang or Chinese philosophy, Chinese history. Here we have the first book that I ever read in Chinese, Loto Xiangzi by Lao Xia. Now, if all of this stuff, if for every item that I had, the digital text and the audio were available, then I could learn them so much faster because I'd have access to dictionaries. And ideally, when we're dealing with history, for example, maybe being able to click through to some historical references. Um, this was a book that influenced me. I read it all in German and it's about how the brain learns. I've referred to it many times, written by Manfred Spitzer. Uh, in my Japanese learning, this series from NHK on the history of the Showa era, Showa no Kiroku, I listened to it I don't know how many times, but I never had the transcript for it. If I had had the digital transcript, it would have been so much more useful for me. Uh, you know, Swedish, for example. I have, I have listened to Hermann Lindqvist's collection on Swedish history. That was a major part of me taking my Swedish from a very limited level up to a more advanced level. This was another book that I found in Swedish, which had uh, the audiobook with it about, you know, rhetoric, how to develop, d deliver speeches. Um, you know, Swedish books, I always buy books for which there are audiobooks. Swe Swedish is one of those languages for which there's lo there are lots of audiobooks. Russian is the same. And then on the other hand, Korean, not so much. So I buy a book in a bookstore here that doesn't look very difficult, but it's just a little bit too difficult for me. If only that were available in a digital format with an audiobook, that would be awesome. Uh, here, uh, just to show you, I have, you know, uh, Russian audiobooks. This is the Czech series, Tolki Chesko Minulosti, that I bought, even though you can find it on the internet. French. Here are some Japanese audiobooks. Uh, you know, German. Uh, what have we got here? Are my Swedish audiobooks, Swedish here, and French, German, Spanish, Italian from uh, Il Narratore, 
So, lots of different things. Uh, I even met a Greek publisher while I was in, where were we, Portugal, and he sent me this lovely book, which I would love to read, but it's just a little too difficult. If this were available in digital format, and even add to that with audio, that would be amazing. Here's my book in Chinese, for those who want to read it in Chinese. So, that's just a, a kind of a quick look at my library. So, that was a quick look at, at some of the material that I have used in the past for learning languages. But we are, of course, in a much better period when it comes to learning content. Um, there's an abundance in certain languages, like Russian, like Swedish, like uh, maybe Spanish, certainly English, French. There's lots of material available. Uh, in other languages, less so. Uh, at Link, we have in some languages probably too much content. Maybe not all of it is of good quality and maybe we should be doing a better job and maybe our members can help us in culling some of the material that's not so good. However, that's always subjective. Some people may have already downloaded these and have started studying them, so we can't just eliminate them. We're looking at how to present our content in a more attractive way, more like Netflix, and that's going to be coming fairly soon. Uh, and we got to look at better ways of helping people find content of interest. But in those languages where we have a lot of content, it's more a matter of helping people find things. But in, say, Turkish, you know, I'm going through who is she, it's all spoken in one female voice. It's very difficult to follow if you have two people in a dialogue and you can't, can't tell who's who. Because you need all the help you can get in order to understand something that's in a strange language. And in the case of Turkish, somewhat, you know, a structure that I'm not used to. So, you know, where do we get more content for, say, Turkish? Turkish, Arabic, Persian, Greek, the languages that I've been doing recently, there is a lack of sort of that next level of content. And I don't know what we're going to do. I guess to some extent, I end up having to pay to have the, this kind of content created. Perhaps there's people out there who have some suggestions. Uh, maybe there are people out there who can help us with content, finding more content. I mean, already we have the ability to bring in videos with subtitles from YouTube. Uh, right. However, I can't find any Turkish movies or videos with subtitles to import, so that doesn't help me. Uh, one of the problems with bringing in video, you know, movies per se, is that there is so many there's so many action scenes where there are no words. The ideal scenario would be to have sort of a, a di you know a, a, di a digest of the dialogue to study as a lesson with audio, and then to go and enjoy. The video or the audio, the, the the movie itself. I mean, there's many different things that can be done to 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 take us along from that sort of first stage, mini story stage, who is she stage, to where we can really go after you know authentic material, and and so anybody out there that has any ideas on where to find such material, what we can do. Obviously, if we can get people to have simple dialogue, simple conversations with their friends or their spouses or their kids even, and then transcribe it, that kind of material is not only lively, uh, if it's spoken first and then transcribed, but typically those kinds of casual conversations are going to use uh, higher frequency vocabulary. So to my mind, that's an ideal kind of learning material. In the case of German, for example, I came across a series of interviews on different radio stations in Germany where they talked about every subject under the sun and that was a very important bridge for me to take me to the next level of difficulty. And I think that we need to focus more on coming up with um, content that is interesting, accessible, bearing in mind the dramatic drop off of word frequency. It's very difficult to come up with stories at that <laughs> mythical N plus one level of difficulty you're going to run into the fact that the more interesting the material is, probably the greater the number of low frequency words. Therefore, they don't repeat very often in a given text. Uh, and yet we want to get at that in order to be constantly, you know, experiencing the language, reading in the language, listening in the language. And, and when I think back of my uh, Chinese learning experience, like I only showed you a small portion of the books that I read and that I listen to. 
It takes a lot of content, not just to pick up the vocabulary, but also to gradually and ever so slowly have that, you know, language start to seem natural to you. So, and in order to stay on track to continue learning, you know, content is key. And we, I think we at Link, we have to do, and we are going to do a better job at finding content, presenting the content, helping people find what we have in our libraries. And maybe we should hire a full-time person to do just that. Maybe there's people out there that would like to do that. At any rate, content is essential to a, a sustained commitment to learning a language and taking it up to that level of fluency that we all want to achieve. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.